So hello for lover, welcome back to Pacific Correct. Warm Pacific greetings to you all. Okay, this is part two of my drug talk and I want to pick up on something that I think is really, really important from a Pacific perspective. If they did legalize the selling of drugs, guess where they would be selling it? So in my first talk, I talked about them um, saying we want to legalize because we want to help Pacific Island Māori, you know, and that's because they get a stigma and it makes it hard to go forward. But here's the other thing. They're going to put these drug shops in our Pacific areas, in South Auckland, in you know, areas of West Auckland, in Petone, in, in Parirua. They're going to be in places where there's a large build-up of Pacific people. How do I know? Because that's exactly where they put the alcohol. That's exactly where they put the clothing trucks. That's exactly where they put, you know, the gambling machines. They're going to do this to us, and it, they're going to say this is, you know, for you. But let's not be sucked into that stuff, team. It's obvious that that's where those shops are going to go, and we know who's going to be damaged the most, our people. I'm going to take a little bit of time now to explain to you what regulation looks like. The, the, the government is saying, look, if we regulate, it'll be okay. Regulate just means that you have to get a whole lot of people to observe what's going on. So let me explain to you how the drug thing really works as I break down in my own mind. There are two groups involved in the drugs. A, there's a small group of people who want to get stoned. They just want to forget reality. They just want to get on with you know, doing stupid stuff. And then there's a, on the other end of the scale, there are the big corporates. There are the businesses that want to make a lot of money from these stupid people. So when you think about these two groups, what actually happens is the government says to the businesses, all right, you can open, but here's the regulation. You can only sell potency this much. You can only sell to this age group and this demographic. And so what happens is the business is all set up. They got you set up in the malls. You know, you can see those vape shops and they'll all immediately turn into drug shops. But what happens at this point is that they start their business. But, you know, as I explained to you in the first part, that the gangs are actually now watching where the gaps are and they're creating other products for those groups. They're going to find that people aren't going to the shop to get their stuff. They prefer to go to the gangs because the gangs can give you more bang for your buck and there's not so many rules and they can drop the price because they run the industry. What's going to happen at that point are the people that have come in, who've paid them you know, thousands of dollars in a license to do their thing are realizing, hey, we're getting ripped off here. We're not getting what we thought we were going to get. They say to the government, you know what? We demand more enforcement. What does more enforcement mean? More enforcement means that they need the police to go around and lock up the gang members that are in charge of the industry to take them out of the equation. There's no way that they, the police can go around there and just put a bracelet or anklet on them because that means they can still carry on their business. The only way to take them out of the industry is to arrest them and put them into a prison. Oh, what prison, you ask? Because most of our prisons are full. So what we have to do at that point then is that we have to build some prisons so that we can introduce this law so that it all just snowballs. So in introducing the building of some prisons, we now need to employ some wardens. Wardens to look after the prisoners who get locked up on the drugs. And you're thinking, well, will our Pacific Island Māori get locked up? Yes, we will. Why? Because when the regulations come in, there's new rules that you have to abide by. Our Pacific Island Māori aren't going to abide by those rules. They're just going to carry on doing what they want to do. Hence, they're going to get locked up. And there's research overseas showing that the group that they were trying to help are the ones that get locked up the most after the law is passed. So then what happens is there's this new enforcement. We're locking up people. We've got to put them in the prison. You understand, too, that when you've got a whole lot of drug people driving around and going around doing robberies to get some more money so they can go buy more and get another hit, there's going to be some devastation out there in the health industry. So now, you know, we're already struggling for our people to go in there and have appointments to sort out cancer and sort out their diabetes and sort out all their other bits and pieces. Now we're going to have to have some more hospitals. And why? Because there's a small group that wants to get stoned and there's a big business group that wants to get rich. And here we are, we're dealing with the aftermath of all this. So now we need new hospitals, new staff. Who's paying for that? Oh, taxes, of course. Remember the enforcement part? So important to realize that we're going to need some other police officers because the police that we're currently doing the enforcement and can't even get to your motor accident, to your burglary, they can't come and investigate and do the lockup. So we need a new police force, a new law enforcement, drug enforcement agency. And so who's going to fund that? Oh, of course, it's us again. So let me just get this right. You've got a small group of people that want to get stoned. You've got a 
even smaller group actually, of you know, millionaires that want to get richer. And then what we have to do is everybody in the middle is paying for all of the things to allow this thing to go forward. We're paying for the new prisons, we're paying for the new hospitals, we're paying for the new law enforcement, we're going to be paying for new, paying for new counsellors to deal with all of this. Why? Oh, because a few want to get stoned and a few want to get rich. And we in the middle, we the public, are going to pay for this. And I'm thinking that's just really stupid. So team, the real cost of allowing us to not only legalise cannabis, but according to you know, the Drug Foundation, let's legalise everything because there's a stigma to all drugs, then the real cost will be to us, the taxpayer. And I'd much rather our money, the tax money, the taxpayers go into building houses, into fixing infrastructure, our roads, into sorting out the bits and pieces that our government should be sorting out instead of trying to get tax from a drug that's going to devastate our communities. Team, there's lots of research and if you want to see more, go to our website, which will be down below. Have a look. Punch in cannabis in the search bar and look at all the research that's been done there from all over the world. It's really, really important that we understand what's going on here and not just go along with what everyone is telling us because let me tell you this, the media are right behind the whole legalized marijuana and other drugs too. And it's really obvious by when we were arguing the referendum, have a look at how much coverage that, w that the pros were given a, a, as opposed to the against. That would be an eye opener for you. So team, thanks for joining me again for the part two. I wish you all the very best and let's stay specifically correct. Thank you so much. Pafte lava, pasu free.